We're going to just look over here. And uh, Louis, uh, say and spell your name for me so I have it. Louis Rodriguez, L U I S R O D R I G U E Z. And your title? Uh, CEO of Rodriguez Construction Group. CEO. Okay. Um, so tell me a little bit about Rodriguez Construction Group first. All right. So we are a Rodriguez Construction Group is a 10 year old business. Um, I started it uh, out of my kitchen table uh, back in 2012. We incorporated in 2013. Uh, today we have around 65 employees. We we do about 20 million dollars in revenue a, a year. Uh, we provide construction management services, general contracting. We self perform site work, selective demolition, uh, final cleaning, uh, and dumpster roll off services. We primarily uh, do con uh, commercial construction uh, around Western New York. Cool. And uh, how'd you get involved with the Hispanic Heritage Council? So I've known Kaz, uh, there's no relation, no, uh, even though we share the same last name, there's no, no family ties at all. Um, but I've known Kaz uh, for a long time through the community, through my father. My father was very heavily involved in the, in the Hispanic community. Um, but we started doing some work along Niagara Street, um, providing some concrete sidewalks and, pay, and, and pads for some of the buffaloes. Um, you know, Kaz isn't afraid to ask any questions or ask for, ask for some favors. So, you know, we got involved that way. And then through conversations with Kaz and his vision uh, and, you know, these conceptual ideas he had in his head, uh, we took those concepts and put it on paper. So um, early on, that's where, you know, we worked with Steve and Kaz and put these renderings. Um, and seeing the skill set that Steve had, we were able to put that on paper where it didn't cost Kaz a dime. We did it all pro bono and uh, put construction schedules and gave them all the, the, the fundamental tools, you know, in order to start the project and, you know, have the concept become a reality. What does it mean to you personally to be involved in something that it looks like at this point is gonna happen? I mean, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's pretty damn cool it's um, I think it's something that the community deserves I think it's something that can showcase how um, the future of the community and the Hispanic community how we can collaborate how we can come under one roof and provide services that the community needs um, you know I'm one that uh, I'm always I'm a giver I like to give back and I think it's important because you know, as I grew up, I grew up on the west side of Buffalo. Um, I'm a byproduct of programs, uh, you know, enrichment programs that helped me get to where I'm at. So there's other people that paved the path to provide those opportunities. And I just feel like it's my responsibility to continue paving the path forward for future generations. And this building is, um, uh, will be a little piece of something you can leave behind that uh, I think is going to help for generations to come, especially in our community that need the help and services. And also something that could be really, people could be proud of, um, proud of, you know, the work, the design, um, and a nice building that can be welcoming to, to all. As leads into my next question, what, what can people expect from this project once it's completed? What, you know, what, is there special touches, anything that you guys have worked with Kaz on to, uh, to include? Well, I think, I think this can show that um, you have some, some minds in the community that are looking to think big. Um, I think it's deserving to have a nice building and collaborating with, um, you know, government officials to provide the resources to put this back in and be able to show that we can execute and deliver um, a building. So, you know, those are those are things that we live with every day, making sure that this project moves forward and we're stewarding, um, you know, the, the grants and the dollars um, to get this thing, you know, shovels in the ground and ready to go. So um, I just think it'll pave the path for other communities to be able to say, this is a type of building that can, um, you know, really bring the community alive. What, um, where does it stand? What, where, where do you know where the, 
where the project stands now. I mean, it sounds like from Steve, but everything's, you know, architecturally ready so, to go. So yeah, so currently we are in, you know, quote unquote, the design development stage. So next is, you know, the construction documents. So we are vetting all the budgets right now. I mean, we just are coming through the pandemic. Uh, there's been a lot of increases in labor material, um, you know, logistics of uh, materials. So, you know, we're making sure that we're staying within the budget we have. The budgets have increased, but um, I think we're pretty, um, I think we're, you know, I think we can uh, navigate where we're at to date and try to try to make this a reality but there's still there's still some some gaps that we've got to fill in but i think that uh we're looking at trying to get shovels in the ground within the next 45 to 60 days um we believe that we can try to look at getting some foundation work going and once that we'll build some momentum um and having this probably complete within an 18 to 24 month duration this has been an ongoing, I mean, I'm sure buildings take years to, to construct and design and stuff like that, but this has been, what, since 2017, 2018? So yeah, I think believe around 2018, we've- so uh, Pre-pandemic. Correct, so yeah, we- And how did, that, how did all of that play out over the course of the last few years with everything going on in the world? Well, I think we had some good momentum and then the pandemic hit and, there was, um, you know, there was a lot of fundraising efforts, but, you know, that were going and, and, and we were going out to the public on the fundraising end and capital campaigns, but that kind of shut down. So I believe Kaz rerouted and, and went after grants, and that was a key move to do over the next two years to acquire the amount of grants that he was able to get. Um, makes it a little more difficult you know, construction wise, managing the budgets on, you know, 10 to 15 different grants, but, you know, we'll figure out the complexities of it. And, you know, but I think that that's going to help us get, uh, get the building, you know, built. Yeah. Um, I asked you kind of what it means to Rodriguez construction, but what, you know, you guys build a lot of buildings and do a lot of work around town. What, what is, the completion of this project, what will it mean to you personally and to, to your I mean, for me, it's, um, you know, we, we took this, we took a design build approach. So what that means is we are gaining control of the architectural services. So the architects uh, under our, under contract through us and the state and other agencies are starting to utilize a design build approach. and. I think it's important because there's not too many minority owned businesses, especially in construction that are utilizing a design build approach. And this could be a, um, this could be a project that could be showcased across the state that you can get full minority business participation, um, but also utilizing the design build approach to be able to move the project faster. It also allows us to keep the budget in line because we can value engineer while we're working on the design. That's, that's why we're at a design development level, but we can really start construction because we're pretty close to getting all the numbers in place without having full construction documents as your typical, you know, design bid build approach. Um, you know, we're, um, we're able to have the nimbleness and, and flexibility to, move the design in a way to make sure it fits within the budget. Um, I guess the last question, how's it been working with the Hispanic Heritage Council? I think it's, I think it's great. I mean, I think there's a lot of passion there. I mean, it is a truly working board. And I think as being the leader of that organization leads by, you know, leads by example there. And I think he's, you know, a testament of trying to push the limits, but also leaving something behind that's going to be shared for generations to come. And, you know, it's not just Kaz, it's an entire board, you know, from Esmeralda to Denora, you know, to everybody that's there. They're on the meetings every week. Um, they're involved, they're engaged. And I, you can see the excitement being built up uh, with the designs coming to life. And 
once um, once we get shovels in the ground, I think the excitement's going to really start building up, and and it's seeing a reality of of what this project uh, truly is going to become and transform you know the community and the neighborhood that it's in. Perfect. Anything else I didn't ask you you want to say? No, I think. Uh, no, I think that's that's it. Thank you. Man. Thank you.